taxes, marketing, social media, uh, rights of practitioners, as well as uh, recommending the use of written agreements in all relations for the arts. That's the best practice guide, which is developed by uh, development agency, the Visual Arts Network of South Africa, or Vansa. Vansa will host workshops countrywide to unpack the guide. And to tell us more about the guide, we're joined by the Director of Visual Arts Network of South Africa, Mulemo Muila. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Morning. Morning. Thank you, Lemo. Let's talk about best practice guide for visual arts South Africa. What are we talking about here? What is it? So effectively, it's a guide for anybody who's working in the visual arts on how the best way for relations, professional relations to function. Um, and this really covers a wide range of the visual arts sector. Uh, it looks at all the kind of areas of working in the visual arts. So it looks at um, contracting, at exhibitions, at festivals, at social media, at other PR media and also at um, artist rights such as copyright, uh, freedom of expression and these kinds of issues. What necessitated this? So uh, Vansa, the Visual Arts Network of South Africa, actually conducted research in 2010 uh, across the country looking at visual artists across the country and what kinds of issues are affecting artists across the country. And out of that research made some recommendations to the Department of Arts and Culture that there were some key issues that needed to be dealt with. And one of them was the fact that people across the industry don't really have a good sense of how to work in the industry, what ways they should be functioning, and also that because there's a lack of knowledge, people are not necessarily being treated the best way, mm. that they're not able to negotiate for themselves, and so some content needed to be produced so that everybody in the industry at every level could have a good sense of what the best way to function in the industry would be. Did you ask for input from the creative industry themselves? Certainly. So the research has taken place over about a two-year period. Uh, there's been a lot of consultation across the country working with artists, art organizations, art galleries across South Africa. Talk to us about the workshops. How are these going to work? So uh, we now have this best practice guide, which has all this content. Um, and the intention is to get it to as many practitioners across the country as possible. Uh, in the research, we, we recognize that one of the key issues is artists working in rural areas, in smaller towns, mm. who have even less access to information than those in big cities. So we're getting these workshops across the country um, that will provide the, the, the best practice guide for free. Um, but we'll also give them a sort of introduction to how the guide works so that people can feel like the information is accessible. And, you know, one of the things the, the guide strongly recommends is the use of written agreements. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. So in every industry otherwise, yeah. uh, everybody has a contract. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is not normal practice in the visual arts. So no, but most artists and art galleries wouldn't have uh, any kind of written agreement of what mm. they uh, what the relationship is going to be, uh, what kinds of um, financial transactions would exist, but also what would happen if a contract goes wrong, what, what is the general agreement of how you're going to deal with each other. Um, and, and even though this is general industry practice everywhere, it's unfortunately not in the visual arts. Mm. So this is something we're trying to push for, potentially not for full-scale contracts if people are uncomfortable with that, but at least to have something written down in an email, mm. something signed so that everybody is clear of what the relationship is. In your opinion, what are some of the biggest challenges facing the visual arts sector, you know, in relation to issues such as sales, insurance and taxes? So primarily a lack of information. Um, a lot of artists uh, aren't really aware of what they could be doing in the industry. They don't have a good sense of how they could be negotiating for better deals for themselves. Um, and that, that extends into other issues, other, other areas of the professional practice that artists are just not aware of. Um, artists don't have a good understanding of professional practice. They don't have a good understanding of copyright and the fact that they are um, subject to copyright but can also benefit from copyright, um, but also don't have a good understanding of things like tax and finances and so can't really manage their own uh, sort of business practice, if you will. Why though? Why is it that, you know, artists are not taking ownership of their own businesses? I mean, this is my craft. This is my way of making a living. Why do I not know enough about copyright and taxes? You know, to some degree, this is a challenge across the arts, but the visual art is especially affected because artists work on their own. Uh, so if you're in theatre, if you're in music, you work with other people, you work mm. with producers, you work with uh, other instrumentalists, whatever. But in the visual arts, generally, artists are alone in their studios, painting or sculpting or whatever like that. And so there isn't a strong sense of a community of people who 
are represented by an organization that, that they want to get informed about their industry. Vanta has been in existence since 2002, um, and over that time there's definitely been a lot of change, but there's still a lot of work to do. All right, let's talk about the workshops. Where are you starting? What is the nature of these workshops? What is it going to look like? So the workshops have already started um, all across the country, um, in, in some, some in big cities, but also in smaller towns. Um, the information is available on our website if you want to attend a workshop. And they're all for free. Um, you really just need to sign up and arrive and then you will get a copy of the guide and you'll be talked through some of the, ca the key issues in the guide such as the different kind of language. We've tried to make it as simple as possible mm. um, but it covers a very wide range of things so it can get a little bit complicated particularly around some of the areas that are um, within law such as copyright or labor law, those kinds of things. So, so the workshops would kind of introduce you to some of those issues um, and would also just uh, show you how the book works, how you can use it, whether you're using it before you embark on a project or whether you use it when a problem comes up. So really just to give you a good sense so that you can really feel like that document is yours and it's for you, for you to use. Where's the next one? The next one will be in, in the Free State in Klotla, um on Tuesday and there's another one in... Uh, Northwest in Rustenburg on Monday. All right, Mulema Muila, thank you so much. Sure. Always such a pleasure. She's a director of Visual Arts Network of South Africa, speaking to us about a new project. Well, it's sort of it's a guide, uh, best practice guide for the visual arts uh, in South Africa. Vanza is a support point and development agency for contemporary art practice in South Africa. www.vansa.co.za. So if you're practicing uh, visual art artist at the moment you might want to take a look at this guide all right Let's